Hey there, Oregon. Welcome to summer. I love this time of year. And in fact, I would do June all year long if I could. The weather's great. The excitement of summer is in the air. And it's just a really enjoyable, fun time of year. But right now in our real estate world, there's a lot of story cycling that are creating fear or confusion for a lot of people out there. And they tend to circle around the words of bubble, and crash. So should we remain optimistic about the state of our current real estate market? Or what should potential home buyers or sellers take into consideration with these stories swirling around out there? Let's take a look at the numbers and see just exactly what's happening in this month's Oregon, Wisconsin housing market update for June of 2022. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Minter, team lead of the Minter team at Realty Executives Cooper Spransing. I've been living in town for over a decade now, and I gotta tell you, this is one of the wildest, craziest markets I've seen. Inventory's low, we're seeing some weird and wild offers, and quite frankly, there's a lot of unpredictability in terms of what is happening on any given property or any given weekend. But what does this all mean and how did we get here? First of all, let's address the big concern and that's the word crash. A lot of people thinking that the market's going to crash because home prices have gone up and not just gone up, but gone up so quickly in such large amounts. Since this general idea is a larger market concern, I will get to it. But right now for the purpose of this video, I wanna focus on data specific to Oregon. If you want a detailed overview of what's going on with the market at large and why I don't think we're going to see a crash, you can check out our Dane County housing market update for June of 2022, where I go over all the data. Or just stick around to the end of this video and I'll cover some of it then as well. Short answer is we, we are not going to see a crash. A crash is, is sharp and quick and fast. Uh, it, the bottom falls out and everything goes down. And that's not going to happen. We probably see a shift we might see a, a slowing of the market, but certainly not a crash. We're probably gonna end up somewhere where we were in the 2014 to 2018 range when we continued to see rising prices and competition on houses. So with that out of the way, let's get specific and take a look at what's going on right here in Oregon. Now final numbers are still trickling in. So some of this could change between the time I pull this data and the time this video actually goes out, but let's take a look at where we are today. So far through May, we've had 89 houses hit the market. That is the lowest number we've had in the last five years, but yet it's not too far off what we saw last year when we had 92. This continues to be our biggest problem. It's low inventory and people not putting their houses on the market. As of today, we currently have 16 houses on the market that do not have an accepted offer, but 10 of those are new construction. So that means throughout all of the 53575 zip code, we only have six existing homes currently sitting on the market. And that number is way too low, especially for this time of year. On the flip side with demand, we've had 56 houses sell this year. Unfortunately, that number is down 18% from last year and a whopping 25% decrease from 2020. What's really interesting though, is that through March, we were on par or ahead of those two years in terms of home sales. So if we look specifically at April and May, we're gonna see those two months down 36 and 44% from the last two years in terms of sales, bringing us under for the year. This trend is gonna be really interesting to watch because if it continues through the summer, that's really gonna to talk to us about the pacing of the market and what our sellers can expect. Now, part of low sales does have to do with fewer homes available, right? So we do need to obviously put those two together and tie them together because you know, fewer things to sell, there's gonna be fewer sales that happen. That's, that's common sense. But the fact that we're down from last year where we had similar number of listings tells a different story. This is super important to understand if you're going to be in the market because a lot of realtors are out there only telling the big story, which is the house that sold for 100,000 or more over asking price or the one that had 27 offers. And it's happening and it's true and it's, it's something we've seen, but it's not the market, right? That is not the market, that is not the expectation. Despite similar listing activity, we have seen a decrease in sales in Oregon when compared to the last two years. 2022 might not be as hot of a market as 2020 or 2021 were in Oregon. So what does this mean for people looking to buy or sell? 
Well, for home buyers, look, if you wanna buy a house, buy a house. If you're in the market and it's a lifestyle improvement for you to buy a house, buy a house. Because simply put, waiting is not going to help you. When you buy a house, you buy two things. You buy the loan and you buy the monthly payment. So whatever your loan amount is, that's less that you're going to have in terms of equity when you get in the house, but you're also buying the monthly payment. That's your day-to-day -day impact. And the monthly payment is gonna to continue to go up because home prices are going to continue to go up. For sellers, expectations are super important so that you can make great decisions getting ready to go on the market and once you're on the market if you expect to just stick a sign in your yard and have buyers banging down your door like it's black friday at walmart you might be in for a rude awakening. You're gonna see the best results if you use a local full service agent. There are of course some one-offs and some properties here and there that you know buck the trends, but overall, when we look at Oregon agents, we significantly outperform the rest of the market when it comes to Oregon-based listings. So let's take a look at this. When compared to other agents, Oregon agents sold Oregon homes on average five days faster for an additional 1% over asking price and were 10% more likely to have a competitive offer situation than other agents. In other words, using an Oregon agent is more likely to sell your house faster for more money and with more competition. It's a win all the way around. Bonus is that it's the Oregon agents that are visiting the local restaurants and supporting your kids athletic program or supporting other community initiatives. The money stays here. The money stays in Oregon. Let's shop local. Hey, thanks for sticking around. For those of you interested in more information for why I don't think we're gonna see a crash, I'm gonna get to that in just a second. For the rest of you to stay up to date with tips, tricks, real estate, news, and new listings, make sure you follow us on social media or subscribe on YouTube. And for questions or comments about this video or your unique situation, leave us a comment or get in touch with our team. I'd love to hear from you and we love supporting our Oregon neighbors. So regarding the crash scenario, you ready for this? If we look at some of these graphs to take a look at supply demand, supply demand is the number one economic law, right? We know that when supply is low and demand is high, we have a shortage, correct? And when we have a shortage, prices do not go down, right? Prices remain high. Prices continue to grow when we have a shortage. So in order to go into a surplus where we see redu a reduction in prices or we see what people would refer to as a crash, uh, we need to have that supply outpace the demand. And so here's what I'm looking at right now. If we take a look at this graph from 2006, we are going to see right now that in, in 2006, in October 2006, we had 5,500 houses on the market in Dane County. And we hit the low of about 4,000 at the beginning of 2006. Yet when we look at demand, we can see that we're hitting almost 1,000 for the peak months of each 2006 and 2007. So if we go into 2008 and 9, we're gonna start to see the supply start to come down, right? People stopped putting their houses on the market as much. Uh, we were in the recession there, less people were moving. So we do see this number start to come down, but still, even then, we're still about 4,000. We still have over 4,000 houses on the market at the end of 2009. That's, that's crazy, and yet, Peak sales, June 2008 was 750, so that was a little low, and July of 2000 was 800, so that's down, but that's it's down about 20%. So sales are down about 20% from 2006, 2007. Now let's take a look at where we are today. All right, 2020 and 2021. So now, look at where we're peaking out on sales, 1,000, we're right back up there where we were, but look at our supply. We've gone down here February 21, under 450, all right? December 21, under 450. Look at this supply line compared to what was going on in six, seven, eight, and nine. This supply is way down. In fact, it's like a 90% decrease. When we look at 2022, again, we're hitting that demand right around 1,000 up through, through 2021. It remains to be seen if we're gonna hit that here in 2022 or not but our demand line look at this february 2022 just above 200 and right now as i film this we have 500 available so when we think about that peak of 5500 in 2006 down to 500 now that is a 90 percent decrease in the number of available houses yet we aren't seeing a 90 percent adjustment in the number of sales so 
demand staying here and what happened is supply has continued to go down and it's taken us 16 years to get here it's going to take us a long time to get back this is not going to happen overnight and here we're balanced we're probably still going to see a little appreciation here is where we got to get to to see prices go down so that's why i don't think we're going to see a crash our supply and demand is just so out of whack right now that we have to get that under control before any of this can really become a reality if anything we're likely to see a slowdown we're probably going to get back to like 2014 2015 and if we look at where we were then, it looked more like this. So 2014 and 15, we can see our supply line here. It looks better than it does today, but it's still not where it was prior to the last crash. We've got 1,100 sales. We've got 1,000 sales in our peak months. You know, but here we're at 2750 at peak inventory. And even down here, like we're just over 1750. So even if our inventory triples, quadruples, or goes up 500%, we are still going to be in a market like this one where we saw competition, we saw rising prices, and we have so far to go to get to here before we can really talk about prices going down. All right, those of you that stayed for overtime, thanks for sticking with me. Once again, I'm Jeff, let's connect soon.